Hello everybody, back with another video on War Thunder. Today I just wanted to go over my aspirations and hopes for the future of War Thunder to do with aviation. I'm not talking primarily about update 1.91, but it would be nice to see something like these in it. Obviously we are so close to the release that I'm highly doubting that we will see any of these things added that I'm going to talk about here. Um, however, I would like to see them in the future, if at all, really. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight into it and we'll see where it really goes. Something that I've always personally wanted added to the game has been the idea of AI sand sites. If you don't know what I mean, what I'm talking about is, especially in something like Enduring Confrontation that you work especially well, is only lots of top tier, etc. You can understand sand sites where you don't want them fighting biplanes. Um, on the map, and I'll put up on the screen and make sure it's in there and clear for you, um, the idea of having a circle over the map, having a new sort of map system implemented, where you can see a circle, a red circle, let's say, around the map, but depending on whose team it is, your one or the enemy's team. And then if you go inside that circle, there is a high chance of you getting engaged and killed by a lock or missile. Of course, a way to counter this being if Gaijin was to implement proper um, defilade cover able to sneak up on this sand site you can actually knock it out by using defilade or if you perhaps approach incorrectly if they add flares to the game which is also something I would like to see them add to the game which have been proven to work as well with helicopters they do work currently in the game um, you can flare up pull off and then re-approach from a new angle etc or you can uh, escape the um, zone you can pull off approach from a new angle etc um, it would just be a new thing to really implement into the idea of even realistic battle because a lot it doesn't really change the mechanics behind top tier and low tier the, how you fly your plane changes and how you engage in combat changes but in terms of interaction with the environment nothing changes it's still bomb that point destroy that bridge, destroy the convoy, etc. Um, the AI planes flying around. All this all this normal stuff that's been in the game for as long as I can personally remember. Um, I mean, what I'd love to see is this idea of you have to avoid this place on the map unless you feel like you have the adequate, equi adequate equipment to remove this threat on the map, because then that allows your team to do more in that specific point on the map. Perhaps um, there's a mission going on in the Enduring Confrontation, destroy the SAM site, and then you have to take out the units within the cover of that SAM site, or you can actually do the mission just by um, destroying the ground units if you can get past the SAM site. Overall, when you look at this game, you see people complain a lot about, well, if they're going to keep the 10-0 bracket and that, um, how are new top-tier jets going to work? In terms of, I'm talking about MiG-21 and things like that. Whilst I do agree that they shouldn't be a 10.0 plane, etc., um, they would still be fair to their own extent. Because people thought Supersonics were going to be overpowered when they fought Subsonics. That's been proven not to be as much of the case as people thought it was going to be. And I feel like it would work a lot like the new supersonics that would be added to the game would pick on the already supersonic planes, with the subsonics being that kind of thing that's in the way to get to those people. At least that's how I see it should be played, because you should always be fighting the next biggest threat in line, other than yourself. Overall, my wishes for the game in general isn't new vehicles being added to the game, like the Mix 21. I know they're going to come to the game, raw vehicles like that, including ground forces, everything, but we're going to talk about aviation here. They're going to come to the game naturally. We don't need to push those vehicles. The things that we need to push are new game mechanics. New weapons, which I do count as game mechanics because a lot of the weapons that you're going to start seeing, which are brand new ones, require some sort of new aiming mechanism, lock-on mechanism, whatever you wish, whatever you want to talk about. The things I'm talking about here are anti-radar bombs, 
or missiles or guided missiles, TV bombs, remote bombs, everything you want to, everything you can imagine. I want to push these. Mainly, I want to push the bombs. Because bombs in the game currently, there's no real smart bomb. They're all dumb bombs. All of them. I want some sort of way to be pinpoint with them and aim them whilst you're flying, which would be very much so a computer that I would imagine being down at the little um, corner of your screen. And what it would do is it would be a um, screen where you, whatever's on it, I don't know how it would be aimed at all, but let's say it's aiming at a certain place on the floor. Then you can select targets on that panel. Once they're selected and you're lined up within a certain path which that bomb would need to be dropped, say a square below you, instead of a ring, you've got a square, that square is what is on the remote TV. Uh, which is down in the corner of your screen and then once the any vehicles inside that are highlighted say let's say they're highlighted yellow and then you can choose with your mouse or with it uh, on your keypads um, which target from that you would like to select or even just with the mouse and then once you selected it you click spacebar which would be to drop the bomb, and it would drop within that vicinity. And then you can carry on flying your plane, you don't need to worry about that bomb anymore. It's already dropped. But then say, if you want to counter that, you need to keep your plane relatively in line with that target. If it is, say, laser designated, or if you just want a general, general idea of keeping it cool, keeping it simple, keeping it um, fair rather than you drop it and you can go and do whatever you want. You're a fighter all the time apart from that one split second where you had to lock on, drop it. In terms of countermeasures, I'm not too sure how you could do this. There would be a few ways. Personally, I think anti-radar bombs or guided ordnance would be the better way of going because then they can only lock on to things which have a radar signature once that radar is active such as SPAA. So that would be a great way to test it and then during that testing period, whilst you've already got that sort of countermeasure for it of turn off the radar to get rid of that lock-on, um, that you can be testing and thinking of a way to implement it into a game's point of view, a fun way, an interactive way to counter that incoming um, or, uh, ordinance, whatever you want. Now I'm going to move more on to, well I was already talking about jets, but I'm going to talk about more of the visual effects. I would love to see new effects for the jets, because personally they've been like this for too long and they all look the same. Granted Afterburner does make the flame a bit bigger, but it doesn't do enough. When you look at real life jet engines and when they are actually Afterburner, on full throttle, however you want to put it. They don't look anything like they do in game. And I'll see if I can get an image up on screen just now, just to just to show you the comparison. So you can see it now, quickly do a quick pan around. And then I'll probably implement an image around about now. Now I'm not too sure, I have heard uh, people saying that gauging is going to rework sounds in-game. I'm not too worried with the sounds, to be fair. You see a lot of what I want to change with visuals in tanks as well, but a lot more with their um, death animations. The, you hit a tank and they blow up or they just left a flaming red. There's no real special attribute to them which makes it interesting. To make the game more immersive, more interesting, really you need to add new death effects to the game. So say, when you die and you got ammo wrecked, it doesn't instantly blow off your turret. But I don't know whether you've seen, or if any of you have ever played the Modern Warfare series of games, there was a scene where you blow off the turret of a... Um, an Abrams blows off the turret of a T-72. But it doesn't instantaneously blow off. It cooks off and there's all these cool sparks flying out from the um, um, turret room. And then it blows off. We need more effects like that rather than... Occasionally I do see them kind of trying to do that sort of thing where it won't blow off 
straight away, it will blow off a little bit later on, but there's no effect leading up to that. We need more depth animation, so you see this a lot with helicopters as well, where there is no um, spinning effect as such when they go down, which you see in all of the games. And my aim is terrible today, wow, probably because I'm so focused on talking to you guys. Comparatively to what I first spoke about, which is the idea of the SAM sites, the AI SAM sites being around the map, I'd also like to see new, new enemies flying around the map. Say, let's say they um, refuse to add them to the game, straight away, let's say, which I don't know whether they have already confirmed it or not. Let's say the TU-95 Bear, B-36 Peacekeeper, and B-52 Stratus. Let's, let's put those names out there quickly now. Why don't they make a quick mock-up, not an HD version, of those planes and have them flying around at insane altitudes just to push that idea of modern era combat pushing above everything that has been before. So, that you, so you're fighting at those insane altitudes which, like you see on the stat cards which are like 1400 meters. And why can't we then engage those and then get a massive reward for it? But then the other team is like, defend it. Why focus the game at top tier primarily around what it's always been, which has been the PvP aspect? Why not push it more towards this bigger idea other than what it currently is in the game? Push it towards you get more points for this. Because if you get more points for doing something, then it will instantly shift what everyone's trying to do. You can focus everyone's attention a lot more easily. You can give the game a lot more flow. And then you could also work this into the lower tiers as well. So I'm not just talking about top tier here, which I know for a lot of people isn't the entire game for them. A lot of people enjoy the lower tiers. I'm, I'm going to try and, tick, uh, try and stick to aviation here. But you could have a massive, massive squadron formation of B-17s. You could work out a counterpart for Russian tech, Japanese tech, etc. And you could try and focus more maps, not all of them, you could still keep a few maps which are set map rotations for just the PvP combat which we can't get having again. But then why not have the game mode simply change to be so much simpler to be going... Well, I say simpler, it would be a bit more advanced. But why not change it around a bit? Give people something a bit more interesting to do rather than every match is the same. Just the map is different. Because people have different views and different maps for Air Realistic. I know they do, I do personally as well. But they're all the same at the end of the day. It's a big open space you can fly around. The only difference being whether or not it's in the desert, grassland, or um, snow. And all that affects is really your max speed and how fast your engines overheat. They're, they're the only differences that I see gauging actual map design, AI work and effort into game mode design really go towards. I don't see them go towards anything. Oh, look, guys, it's a glitch. Don't you love that? Gaging? Fix it. Please. Oh wow. Don't you love that? In fact, another thing I'd like them to add to the game, which also couples onto practically everything that I've mentioned so far, is if you look at the snap cards for certain vehicles, and we're going to talk about aircraft here, they have the name Fighter, an engine heavy fighter, interceptor, etc. We're going to focus on the fighter and interceptor here, not the bomber rolls, etc. But why don't the interceptors get a different message come up across the top of their head? Why don't they get more of a reward for intercepting bombers, get killing bombers, than killing fighters? Because then that way you can sway the point in going down an interceptor line or going down a fighter line, or a bomber line, or a long range bomber line. Perhaps the long-ranged bomber line, you'd get more points for destroying bases, 
and then for the short range um, or frontline bombers you'd get more points for destroying pillboxes, vehicles, etc. But you would still get the current amount of points that you get within game for destroying a base, which is still adequate enough. But why don't you get more if you destroy it with a vehicle which is specified to get more and that couples on with its um, name? So many simple things that they could add in, just as multipliers for vehicles, for killing certain vehicles. It would be such a simple way of making vehicles interesting and adding meaning to giving a vehicle the name Interceptor, giving a vehicle the name Fighter, giving a vehicle the name Frontline Bomber, giving a vehicle the name Long Range Bomber, giving the name Twin Engine Heavy Bomber, which I'd have to personally work out a multiplier you get for flying out a Twin Engine Heavy Bomber, but Bomber? Um, fighter, but you guys can probably let me know, know down in the comments as to what you think a multiplier could be for one of them. I'm fairly certain some of the probably think of one. Another thing I'd like to push is the remodeling of aircraft carriers. Um, and airfields in game, especially for when it comes down to top tier. If you look on the map, I believe that it is, um, I can't remember the name of the map currently, but it has this massive, great big modern looking airfield in the middle of it. Um, I believe it's Afghanistan. And you don't get to take off from that, even though that would be perfect for the current planes that we have in game at top tier, currently with their performance. Whilst they have got afterburners, I'm not saying they have trouble taking off, not at all. But it would be a smoother takeoff and a smoother landing. The landing is the problem that people have with in this game. Landing these top tier vehicles, all they did to make it easier and make the work easier for themselves, which personally I think it is easier giving vehicles parachutes than it is giving vehicles um, uh, a new place to spawn. Because then they have to work in into the game, new maps, etc. Or just overall new assets to add to the game. With um, new coding as to how vehicles interact. I, personally, I think that they should be taking a lot more pride in their gameplay point of view. And not just adding vehicles. Because we all know that where they get their money from, and where they believe they get their money from, is new vehicles. Which they do, that's how they get new players into the game. But they're not taking care of their player base as it currently is, in terms of what I've currently been speaking about, which is just simple game mechanics to make it f more fun. Just, just in general, that's the easiest I can shorten it down to. It would make it more fun. It would be more enjoyable. On top of this game, please, please rework your cloud system. The amount of time even after the cloud rework, which I'm not too sure whether it did at all affect this in the first place, but they need to address it now, is spotting people through clouds. It is easier to spot people through clouds than it is when you're not in clouds. Does that make any sense at all? No, it doesn't. And to those of you who, let's say, there's someone watching this who doesn't play this game, you'd be thinking I'm crazy right now. Why is this a thing? Why is it allowed to be a thing? Cloud should be somewhere you go to hide, which, I agree, would be an issue for certain people, because there will be people who go and hide in there. But that's the reason Blind Hunt is, added, uh, is in the game. And on top of that, I personally think that there should be an option for the winning player base. If there is... Um, where there is last two people left, if you are within a 10 kilometer range of them, they are instantly highlighted for you. If it is a 1v1 now, left. Once the game exceeds a certain amount of time. But they've messed up the game mechanic so much. What this game could be is amazing, but what they're not doing with it is ruined. On top of this, let's go back to an idea which is similar to what I was talking about with the stat card names, like Interceptor meaning something. Why not focus the game 
with air combat at top tier, not so much low tier, with ground units, air units, large groupings of AI which would be convenient to destroy, which would be um, a large asset to the enemy team, etc. Because when I say this, I'm not saying get rid of the PvP action. That will still be there. When someone pulls in front of you, you're still going to go after them. There will still be people who will still actively go after people. There will still be dogfights. But there will be more building up to it. There will be more in between, more interest, more dynamics. Say you're engaging that um, squadron of B-52s in your MiG-21. You're engaging them fast. I don't know, you're coming in at Mach 2, let's say insane speed and you take out two of them and then like a minute later some sort of a, an F-18 Hornet comes in something like that a, an enemy plane something someone responding to it I would get a lot more hype out of that a lot more interest out of that like it's a response a retaliation than I would at all with the current meta of the game which is just who's got the better vehicle in terms of PvP. There's no who's got the better ground pounding vehicle. I mean, there is ground pounding to the game to an extent, but there's no meaning to it that, that means anything really. And even people who love ground pounding, I've asked them. And there's no love to it. It's just what you do to get points. There's no dynamics to it. There's nothing massively interesting. I'm not saying get rid of it, keep it there. I mean, if you got rid of that, what would this game do apart from just a PvP massacre? But I want more dynamics to the game, primarily. Everything else, like new vehicles, will come to the game naturally. I don't need to push that myself. Whilst I am hoping for the MiG-21s, whilst I am hoping for the F-18s, whilst I am hoping for the F-22s, the Chinese aircraft, the J-20, perhaps for Japan, you need to remind me if that is Japan or not, I believe it is, it's Chinese or something along those lines, the J series of aircraft, all those interesting things, they will all come to the game naturally. Same with armaments, you could argue, to an extent, but they're not engaging, they won't push them nearly as much as if we were helping. They'll push aircraft themselves, because that's just about the only thing they add to this game. And then when they do put, here's the thing, I have seen the dev books of the new matchmaking that they're going to add, and I don't personally like it, because to me, what it looks like is we're adding this instead of new game modes, and then when you ask for new game modes, and you argue for new game modes, they're just going to reply, oh well, the matchmaking system's too stretched. Well, that's because you're, you've got people in long queues for maps, which a lot of other players have now turned off. Whilst I like it, and I myself am going to use it, yes, definitely, because it means that I can ignore maps that I dislike, it shouldn't be there, not for this game, at all. Because what Gaijin is doing is giving themselves fuel to not give us new game modes because it's too much effort. And what they see to be an interest on those YouTube videos, on those um, trailers, is the new vehicles and not the maps. And personally, I see, I see that. I, I see how there's more interest in planes. But to keep people playing the game for longer and not let this game go down the toilet, you need to add new dynamic maps, game mechanics, weapons, everything in between leading up to this point. If it means you have to quit adding the MiG-21, for example, for another year, whilst you're getting all these mechanics sorted out, do it. Because I want these mechanics. I want them so badly, and I'm sure many of you other people probably do as well. So let's try and push them, please. And I know not many people are watching my videos currently, but please, if, if they aren't already, and you're watching it now, share it with them, or share the idea, the ideas that I have given. These are just a few, and I'm sure there's many in-betweens that I've forgotten that people are going to argue for, oh, but what if... But just, just do it. Those points can be argued out and sorted out in between this point of me saying any of this. I think I've rambled on enough. 
if you liked this content today like comment subscribe share etc whatever you guys do best i'll see you in the next one